Next up, we have Gabather, and presenting for the company is CEO Michael Robin Witt. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. All right, so I'll go ahead and give a spotlight, a short update on uh, where we are at Gabater and uh, this uh, biostock presentation. Thank you very much for the introduction. And I think I'll just go straight ahead with our first slide. And uh, Gabater, we work a lot with uh, cognition. Cognition is a key feature in mental disorders. And uh, we're developing uh, new therapeutic alternatives to treat deficits in cognition. And uh, what cognition is in general is the way we experience and respond to the world. So if we see a situation like on this slide, through experience, we recognize the world, we have an emotional response to it, and a co cognitive uh, response to it, and we act to the world. If cognition and the cognitive process is in a deficit or has some pathology, then our reaction to the world will be different because we experience the world differently, and uh, then we have a mental health issue and mental health disorder. Uh, it is the uh, abundance of uh, indications that are very interesting in looking at cognition in particular in uh, mental health. So this can be disorders involving everything from autism to schizophrenia. Uh, cognitive deficits are more severe in some disorders than in others, of course. Perhaps the most severe and most known is, of course, Alzheimer's disease. But it's a recurrent indication, a recurrent deficit in many mental health issues. And uh, here we have a table, for example, where we basically tabulated uh, mental health issues on the top, uh, on the top uh, row. And if you look and highlight it in red, they are all the symptoms that are relating to cognition in the different disorders. And you can see, just to repeat what I already said before, that cognition is a symptom and a deficit in the vast majority, if not all, of uh, mental health issues. And of course, cognition and cognitive deficit is even a part of so-called healthy aging. Uh, as we all know, as we get older, both learning and memory become, uh, if not impaired, at least deficit. So what are we trying to improve? What are we trying to, to, to get at? What are we trying to solve? The current uh, treatments available for mental health disorders, and now it's a very general approach, very broad approach, have uh, a number of uh, advantages, but they certainly also have a number of disadvantages, and that can be anything from a simple failure to respond to the treatment, i.e. Uh, they simply don't work in a number of patients, although they have the same disorder, or they take a very long time to have an effect, or they have severe to very severe side effects, at least some of them, uh, of those disorders. So there's a lot one can improve with new therapeutic alternatives like we're developing at Gabater. And uh, at uh, GABATER, we focus on, that's where the name comes from, GABA Therapeutics, and GABA is an acronym, stands for gamma aminobutyric acid, long word. It means it's a key inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, and the brain, in a very simple analogy, is driven by both acceleration and braking, so GABA would be the inhibitory, the braking system in the brain, and glutamate would be the excitatory, the driving system in the brain. And it's the balance between excitation and inhibition that actually leads to healthy functioning. Is there an imbalance there, then you would have some deficit or you would have a, a, an issue with mental health. For example, this is not to say that there are many other neurotransmitters who are very important in, in, a, in other disorders, of course, which are here a little bit on the side. I mean, dopamine, key, of course, and so are the other neurotransmitters. But we focus on GABA. We develop drugs that focus on the GABA-A receptor system in the brain. And we believe that the GABA-A system being so important is involved in either the cause or an effect of mental health disorders in general. So it's a very interesting and very much used target also for therapeutic alternatives, ranging from anything from anxiety, insomnia, uh, anesthetics, and so on. They all work on the GABA-A receptor, and our drugs work on this receptor system uh, in a new manner. So what we intend to do, to go back to the very first slide, if you look in the left-hand slide, we have an impaired way of experience the world, an impaired cognition. And this is what we're trying to solve, address, readdress, balance out again with our lead compound, in this case, GT002, which is in the clinic right now. And as you can see, once you readdress the cognitive and rebalance the cognitive 
uh, processes in the brain, then you will have, again, a healthy reaction to the environment and, uh, uh, and improvement in your mental health and mental health processes. Uh, the market for uh, uh, mental health therapeutic alternatives is large. It's increasing, actually, in correlating with an aging symptom. It is also increasing due to, for example, COVID, uh, which we have seen in the last two years. COVID definitely will affect the brain. And we all know that COVID has a large number of uh, psychosocial and also mental health effects, negative ones, unfortunately, mainly. So the number of uh, companies that are developing therapeutic agents in the same area as uh, GABA-Ter, targeting the GABA-A receptor, the number of deals, which are our potential partners in the future, which are large pharma, and uh, the biggest one in this um, particular arena, so to speak, is the deal by Sage Therapeutics in the States, who uh, developed a particular neurotherapeutic agent for depression and uh, they licensed out to Biogen uh, in a billion dollar deal uh, last year in November. So that's the potential that is in this kind of therapeutics, in this kind of therapeutics arena, where Gabate is actually a, a player and wants to uh, actually solidify our position also as a player and interesting partner in the future. So here we have uh, our key compound that we developed over the last couple of years. This GT002 this is a compound that we developed from the lab bench to the clinic with our own proprietary model. We know how to make those molecules. We know how to synthesize. Uh, this kind of uh, therapeutic agents, and uh, there's a very number, number of uh, very interesting effects in preclinical models, and many times I'm asked, you know, how does it really work? How do you measure a memory? And my favorite model is only one of them, where we have seen effects of GT002 as a so-called novel object recognition, and uh, we see in the boxes on the right-hand side, you use the natural curiosity of an animal, it investigates two objects that you put in the box together with it, and then you exchange one object for the other one, and then the animal knows, ah, I already looked at the old object, it has learned it, uh, I will investigate the novel object much more longer, much more thoroughly, and all you do is measure the time, how much time does the animal spend with the old and the new object, and you know that the animal has remembered, and uh, in the, using the curiosity of the natural animal, you can measure actually a learning process. This is just one model, I think it's a very nice one, but it also shows you how difficult it is within uh, uh, neuropsychiatry in general to general models, which you then actually can tra translate eventually to cognitive deficits in man. But this is the first step. It's needed. It's very interesting. And there are not very many compounds that can actually do this kind of effect. So for GT002, for GT sorry, um, we've developed GT002 as a lead compound in order to show that our compounds are effic efficaciously clinically, not only preclinically. A couple of years ago, we transited from preclinical to clinical. And uh, we've gone through two, actually two clinical trials in healthy volunteers, both single and multiple ascending doses. We've patented uh, the formulation of uh, our drug. Uh, it's actually being revised in the US right now. Uh, our patent has been published. I think it's very nice. And uh, we are now going into a target engagement study with, with uh, GT002, looking at the effect of EEG and, uh, and uh, fMRI, which I'm going to talk a little bit more later. Very encouraging results in the clinic. There's very good pharmacokinetic, i.e. how is the drug taken up? How is it metabolized? How is it excreted again? We want to get rid of again. It seems to be that we have been able to generate a formulation that uh, can be given once daily in oral form in a capsule form, which is, of course, an ideal formulation compared to, for example, some of the other formulations of competitor drugs, which are much more tricky to formulate and to administer as a pharmaceutical. So this is very convenient. We have synthesized and prepared a lot of clinical trial material for at GLP level, actually, for, for future clinical trials. So we're ready with that. Uh, the next step uh, in the in our program is, of course, the uh, target engagement study. We will look at uh, the effect of GT002 given orally to uh, healthy volunteers. We will look at the electroencephalogram in the brain. I, we will look at the activity and the modulation of the electrical activity in the brain. We say the cartoon on the top right-hand side. And we will also look at where in the brain does GT002 uh, modulate activity, which regions of the brain 
And there we are, of course, interested in those regions of the brain, for example, that are presumed to be involved or have been suggested to involve, or in, partially even proven to be involved in cognition. So that will be uh, very interesting for us. The study is absolutely a pivotal and a keystone study because those data will then also later be able to guide us in the way into what indications are most relevant and perhaps most interesting for this particular kind of treatment. And we will also use this to benchmark against uh, current treatment. So EEG is for us the, um, the key marker, the activity, and the EEG modulation is, of course, also relevant and interesting in a number of, if not all of the uh, other psychiatric neuro, neuro, uh, and also neurological indications. So we're going to look at the effect of GT002 on the EEG, and from there then look at which indications could be most interesting. We have a number of candidates, of course, already, and we're going to benchmark it and to, together with, uh, or against, rather, uh, current treatments. And this is our pipeline. So the key thing here is that we do still have a, a, a pipeline of other compounds. We have two pattern groups we're working with. Uh, GT002 is the most advanced, most progressed one with the clinical trials and the upcoming target engagement study. But this is pipe, this uh, timeline just to show that, of course, since we can generate our own compounds, we still would generate a new candidate uh, um, uh, drug uh, in, the, in, the next, uh, in the next year, or actually hopefully years towards the clinic, which is uh, right now actually the territory of GT002 alone. Hopefully we'll have other candidates. It makes them even more interesting for, for example, partnering. So that is, that is the idea, and that is the GT00X, so it's a compound so down the pipeline, which I actually want to highlight. Once we have then finalized the target engagement study and we have that data in, there will be a huge amount of data, very interesting one. Then we can move on into phase two and partnering uh, discussions in a number of indications indicated here on the three different colored um, lines following the target engagement study. And uh, the reason that this is a rather lopsided uh, slide is because we have put a lot of effort into G2002 because what's important to show that our therapeutic agents, our candidate drugs actually can be used clinically and not only at the uh, lab level or the so-called molecular two level. These are clinical candidates and very relevant ones. And we're getting quite a lot of interest since we have shown that it's a clinically interesting compound from both uh, potential partners, but also academic groups that want to uh, take a look. So this is uh, next to last slide uh, where we are, we are going with Garbachev. And uh, of course, what we're looking at uh, is partnering with GT002 uh, after the target engagement. And we're already starting some discussions with it. And uh, again, we have a pipeline of compounds coming up. And th the idea is, of course, for GT002, novel approach, minimize the side effects of current treatment and uh, have a new uh, therapeutic alternative within mental health and mental health disorders. Finally, this is, uh, of course, a team effort. The top row is the, the management, and the uh, bottom row is, the, um, is the, the board of directors. Uh, I think a very experienced, very knowledgeable team that has driven this project forward on, I believe, very little small resources compared to what else you can use. And of course, one of the board members passed away two weeks ago, Morgan Snitz, and he's down here in the bottom row. And uh, I would like, just like to highlight him because he was one of the founders of Garbachev, and he's uh, unfortunately not with us any longer. But this being a team effect, of course, we continue working with Garbachev, also fulfilling his dream. And I think I have the last slide, and I think I've tried to keep within my allotted time, and uh, so I have done. And I rest my case. Thank you so much for that presentation, Michael. Um, it, was, it was very clear and concise. And you, you, you talked about uh, the target engagement study and why that's a key part of your clinical development with GT002. Could you go into a little more detail about that? Yeah, right. Target engagement is absolutely key. It's actually a kind of study that has been requested, uh, asked about by potential partners. What you want to see is, does the, blood, does the drug go into the brain? Does it, does it modulate the activity in the brain? Where in the brain does it modulate the activity? And is that modulation different to what you already have as therapeutic alternatives? And this, once you have answered those questions, then you are very far in generating even more interest in, in potential partners. So target engagement, I've always said, uh, it's an absolute keystone, an absolute milestone for us 
and uh, the amount of data that we're going to do is going to be very huge and very interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. And you've recently submitted uh, a request for approval for the study to the Portuguese authorities. When might you expect that approval? Uh, difficult to define uh, bureaucracies all over the world, including Portugal. Mm -hmm. We can say that we submitted all our, our data. They're being processed right now. Uh, there might be questions. If there are questions, there's no question we can't answer. So we're very confident it's going to be soon. And as soon as it's there, we communicate it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you've recently uh, talked about strengthening your management team and recruiting a new CEO. Why is this the right time for this kind of move? Well, it's, it's the right time for two reasons. First one is that now that uh, GT02 will go into a target engagement study, it will be sort of be out of the hands of any preclinical scientist like myself. So this will run by itself. And we will have to focus on our pipeline. And that is where my strengths is, my expertise comes into Garbatea in the best way. And I think it's a very good idea to get somebody with experience and network in the investment community, in the investor relation community, and me to focus what I'm best at. And I'm a scientist by training. I started as a scientist, Garbatea, to go back to the lab, basically. And uh, I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, speaking of structure of the company, you also touched upon uh, the passing of your co-founder and board member, uh, Morgans Nielsen. Uh, that's obviously a huge loss for the company. How will it affect, how does it affect Gabather? Yeah, uh, again, thanks for the, company, for the, for the question. Yeah, it uh, happened two weeks ago, very sudden. Uh, Morgans has been the founder of Gabatea. Many of his ideas of the model that will work and come from him, his lab, including, of course, Olof Sterner's lab in Lund. Uh, and myself, I also worked there. So since we do this as a team, uh, all, the, all this is, of course, salvaged towards the next step for Garbatea. And uh, I worked together with Morgans for 36 years. And I think the best way to honor him and uh, to thank him is to get the GT002 or any other compounds from Garbatea into patients, which is, was his big dream. And uh, I think it's the dream of any preclinical scientist working in drug discovery to see a compound from the lab bench actually into the patient and hopefully with a good effect for the patients. So that, is, uh, that would be the very best way of saying thank you to Morgans. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for answering these questions, Michael, and we do wish you all the best in your thank future you very work. Much. Thank you very much for having me.